Hello again, folks. What a pleasure to have your company. My name is Chris Nell. If you're watching this from Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, I hope you're going to find this second nugget now for the new month to be to your absolute benefit as a whole, as this is brought to you by Sober is the New Cool. And plus, also, I'm proud to announce that I've partnered with Rockstar Testimonies Light It Up campaign, courtesy of Miss Sandra Lee, who's touring the country as we speak. She's just released a brand new book, her memoir. It's like a part memoir, part guidance book uh, to healing from namely addiction, trauma, mental health, stigmas, whatever the case may be. Sandra covers it all and I'm proud to put my little sticky fingerprint on it as well. And it's a joy to join forces with people who have such an open heart as a whole. And that's why exactly I do this vlog every given month. For my second vlog, I'm going to talk about something that you might be familiar with in name, probably, but in premise, the waters might be a little murky, forgive me for the tongue twister there, and that is putting the fit in your fitness. Now, I'm not judging you, hear me, I'm not that kind of person. In fact, Leonard Melton said it himself, whenever he wrote an opinion on a movie or so, it was purely an opinion. No one likes to have their work criticized, no one likes to have their character criticized, and that includes me as a person. Although I'd like to think that my mindset has advanced to such a point that if I'm offered constructive criticism, I would take a healthy nugget or a kernel of something and try and implement it and see if it is worthwhile. So, henceforth, why I would like to talk about the subject. As a preface, I have to go back in time here a little bit. To the very first day that I attended college, the very first advisor, Ruan Fenter, wonderful character, said the one day, posing this question, what is the most expensive thing in this life? A packet of condoms or seeing a new life through to the age of 18? It's quite apropos when you're in your 20s, you've tasted your first bout of independence, you're entering the lion's den for the first time, and... The world is your oyster, so you think in your mind, until you land on something called your ass, and then find out that you are undignified in experience, and in so doing, you get more experience to follow suit. I'd like to take that question and pose a similar premise, although not so salacious, but grim nevertheless. What is the most important thing to you in this life, whether you are in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s? doesn't matter. Investing in your first set of dumbbells, or a barbell for that fact, or your ellip first elliptical, or your first uh, 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 rowing machine, whatever the case may be, or for that fact, would it be more expensive if you were to invest in your casket at the age of 50? It's grim, I know, but therein lies the rub. When I got sober, like with most of you who are either newly sober or have started to enter uh, mid-term sobriety, there's a sort of question that lingers, where to go to from here on? Because for so many years we were so dependent on substances that had provided us with that dopamine hit so we can escape from reality and numb. But it's become convenient as you study through the 12 steps or whatever program you should so choose, which provides you with uh, the necessary building blocks to sobriety. You'll come to notice that it was just too convenient to numb instead of looking the devil in the eye. Glad you agree with me. So too it is with fitness. You know, I've befriended a lot of people overseas who have committed themselves fully to either becoming a hobby athlete, a career athlete, or they just work out purely for the benefits involved. That third point, that third highlight, is what I would like to, pardon the pun, highlight here. It boosts your mental health because you're not getting that dopamine hit. You're getting an explosion of endorphins, or dependent on your gender. Along with those endorphins, you get an excess of testosterone and all the like in your system, which promotes mood, healthy mood gets you uppity and gets you sprite. In fact, I would like to think for those who are serious exercisers that the moment you've gotten through that first session 
of 40 minutes to an hour, you feel like you can take on the world, like you're Conan the Barbarian or Red Sonia for a day, King for a day. <laughs> In any event, I decided to take the leap myself and I recommitted myself to my fitness. And it's been a slow burn, I have to tell you. It's only now that I'm starting to see the benefits of it. My mood is consistently uplifted and I have had shit to pay the last couple of years, let me tell you that much. And apart from that, my endurance has been so extended like you would not believe. Bearing in mind, I run my own setup here. I'm freelancing all over the show. I send emails by the dozen. I'm creating content by the dozen. I'm hosting two podcasts regularly. Uh, I've got Doing It Sober Live on Tuesdays. Now, with Danny, for argument's sake, is hosting from Florida in the U.S. at 5 in the afternoon, local time. I'm here hosting at midnight local time. And I only get to bed at maybe 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning after I have had that adrenaline decrease. But that trite old saying comes to mind that you have to do what others don't in order to achieve what others won't. And that mindset is what we all should have. David Goggins, of course, has the can't hurt me mentality. I'm currently busy with his book, which I'm listening. It's an audio book called Can't Hurt Me. Terrifying. Terrifying read. But terrifying in a good way. Because no matter how much of a bad circumstance or circumstances you have had, you can change it. You can use your story to build your armor. Henceforth, why I said putting the fit in fitness. But before I go any further, I should add the choice is up to you. Yes, you. To decide, am I going to adopt this extracurricular activity? Once you make the decision that you do, what are you doing it for? Do you want to have that beach bar when the time arrives that you can do your strut along the beaches and you can have the bikini babes coming by and taking a look at you? But that would just inflate your ego, wouldn't it? Or would you actually rather like to say, you know what? I'm going to build my body and I'm going to build my mindset so that I can endure, so that I can be at top physical pace whenever I have to make the next decision, so that I have a clear mind that if a certain disagreement comes up, or if there might be a misunderstanding that take, takes place, I've got the mental fabric, the uh, armor, as it were, to take on whatever it is that life throws my way. That's the first phase. The second phase should be, now that I have this endurance, how am I going to expand it? Let's go to the physicality part of it. I did the most silliest thing apart from deciding to adopt a strict weightlifting regimen to undertake running. Absolutely bananas in my eye. Why? You're looking at a guy who as a kid came in last place in the relay, who couldn't even run 100 meters without heaving. I was asthmatic, I had an asthma pump when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, and... It was just too convenient to say, you know what, oh, well, tough luck, I'm not very physically adept, so I'm going to be a couch potato, so I can sit and play video games all day. Insert whatever criteria is applicable. I still play video games, but sparsely, sparsely, sparsely. The uh, console is up there in the TV room. Most times out of 10, I actually use the console just to watch DVDs if I'm having a movie day. Uh, at home, which is normally on a Sunday, but then I get the itch to play a video game, but only, if so ever, for an hour at a time. And it's not every given single weekend. Uh, but getting back to the, to the, to the running bit, uh, I took up running when I was living on my own for a time. I was still in active addiction, but I never followed through. Like one day I would run and then the next day I would quit because either my calves are hurting or my chest burns or whatever the case may be. And after we moved out here to the mountain valley, I decided to give it a whirl and do it regularly. Uh, and that reminds me, thank you so much for the people who responded so wonderfully to uh, 
the video that I put up on Monday, because I grew to enjoy running so much that I couldn't just run two kilometers for a start. I've been running it for five months and it became easy. Oh, excuse me. And I wanted to challenge myself to see how much more I can do. And I've just finished a four kilometer today. And I tell you, when I came home, my legs felt like needles and pins. I thought I, was, I tore a hamstring. But that is the very sign that the muscle is growing. So that tomorrow when I do it again, my timing is going to get better. And it's going to be like falling off a log. And after I conquer that four kilometer, I'm going to add another two kilometers to it to make it a six kilometer. We'll see how time goes. But the process of challenging myself every given day makes my mind and my spirit strong. And let's cover the vanity just to close off. If you were in a business meeting for a niche business, in the conference room there are three people. There's yourself as the potential uh, a client. You've got a mediator or an intermediary or a rep. And then you've got the spokesperson for the company who wants to advertise a tangible or an intangible product to you, product to you, pardon the tongue twister once again. And as much as that person is eloquent in their gift of the gab, the first thing you notice is the physicality. The physicality is a monument of discipline. So it shouldn't be a vanity. It should more be a fact of a badge of honor. Because when you show that you're investing in yourself physically, it shows that you can undertake discipline. It shows commitment. And it shows improvement. I can't believe I said it in that chronological order and it makes so much sense. <laughs> but that's the truth. So the moment that it catches the eye, that product or service is going to be sold like lickety split because then that potential employer or client will say, where can I sign with the dotted line? Let's talk about family, physicality and family. What I would give to have the opportunity to have a day where I would say to my beloved spouse, let's hit the gym. Why? Because if she's following one program, I'm following another. We're showing one another commitment to bettering ourselves and hell, you can even make it a tag team because it builds that connection even more. I see it with uh, an acquaintance of mine, uh, Saya Nelson. Her partner, Greg Maloney, is the founder of American Games. And as I'm led to understand, he's a personal trainer himself who has trained Saya, I think, and a bunch of other people. He was a highlight of a, of, a, of a local news story that was on YouTube not too long ago. So it builds that teamwork. It builds that teamwork, but without the vanity and the ego. The reason why I'm bringing this up at the end of the day is because you and I have a second chance, why not take the fullest to it? Yes, there are moments that we have to be emotional and tears need to come down the cheek. Hurt is inevitable. Hurt is inevitable. And if you're thinking from a theological standpoint, even the Bible says Prepare yourself for hurt, not just emotionally, but physically. Use that to your advantage. And that is what people, namely like David Goggins, also advocates. Because if you are too soft and you let your emotions control you consistently, then we're all in for a bunch of problems because you're not productive to yourself, you're not productive to your family, you're not productive to your career, and you're not productive. If I repeat this, please forgive me. You're not productive to yourself. You've got the second chance. Congratulations. What are you going to do with it? Are you just going to go by like this through life? Or are you actually going to challenge yourself so that your life can become a monument that others can lead? That's the challenge that I pose to you today. Thank you so much for joining me in on uh, this monthly vlog. We hope to have one for you ready March next month. In the meantime, be sure to check out my podcast, Having a Cuppa which will also come to an end at the end of March before we make the big switch over to the Apex Predator. I've also got an album out called uh, Wolves Howl at Nightfall, which has been doing so well so far. It's available on YouTube. Check it out. Like. Review it. I would love to hear your intake on it. 
and I'll see you again next time. This is Chris Snell signing off. Make it sting.